NBA on TNT analyst, Hall of Famer, Reggie Aloysius Miller, joining us on the show. The um, depth perception, as far as a shooter goes, as big as that the uh, AT&T arena is, how, how does that affect shooters? Don't like it. You always like a backdrop, either similar to the Staples Centers and the Lakers or Marcus Square, uh, Madison Square Garden and the Knicks. It'd be all like the, uh, theater lighting yeah. when it's all black. Um, it, it takes some getting used to when you shoot in a dome. It's like playing outside. I mean, you, you like to have a little bit of a, a backdrop just to so you can solely focus in on the rim and the net. Did that affect anything over the weekend with these two games? Oh, I wouldn't say so. Okay. Uh, in, in fact, I believe uh, Bo Ryan in Wisconsin, they arrived to North Texas three or four days early and had a uh, substantial time to uh, get acquainted to uh, uh, Jerry Dome, and they got over there for a few shoot-arounds and practices, and I think all the teams did that. So I don't think shooting was a factor once, uh, at all. Did you shoot there at the uh, – I did pool? not. How, how do you go there and not shoot? It was so hard, too. It, it really was. Like, I don't mean, you want to just peel off, like, you know, five or ten jumpers? It would, have, it would have been great, but I was in a suit, and, you know, it would have been tough. But I, I really did want to. Yeah, but you're kind right. of like Clark Kent, though. You go into the, the, the phone booth, <laughs> and you pop out Reg. You're hitting jumpers. <laughs> I easily could have, but I didn't. I was, try- I was trying to be professional, professional red. Oh, okay. Oh, wow. Okay. And, and then you're – okay, Steve Smith was a pretty good shooter. So you got you got a couple of good shooters in the building there with you. Kerr was there. Ooh, wow. Not Kerr, bad, right? Steve Smith, and you. Who you like? Out of that three? Who you like? Shooting threes? Who you like? <laughs> Steve Kerr. It's not a bad choice. <laughs> oh, oh, it's not a bad. Okay. It's not a bad. It, I didn't say it was the right choice. Okay, okay. I just said it is not a bad choice. Well, you would be the obvious. I think if it was game threes or it was just shooting threes, there's a difference. I think you take your game up a notch. Yeah. Although well, you know what, Steve Smith's not a bad consolation prize. He is. Hey. Yeah. Not. Not Smitty's at all. Good. Smitty is good. Um, and, for, and for the record. Since I am the senior member of the Danettes, yeah, because I trump Paulie, yeah. You don't don't throw shots at Fritzy, and I'm telling you, Fritzy, if these guys keep getting on you, if and when, if and when, if I ever start a show, wow. you will be my producer, my friend. Wow, wow, I'm going to steal. I will steal you away from there, Whoa. Paulie. Don't be throwing shots, okay? <laughs> if you if you're going to have a good time in Dallas, have a good time in Dallas. Don't be calling and throwing shots. I'm the only one that can throw shots at the Dan Wait, wait, Reg, you, this is tampering. Theodore, you Theodore can't trump tam- me. I trump you for. Okay? Did you see Paulie in Dallas? Order. That's the pecking order. Did you see Paulie down there? I did not. Oh, okay. Um, here's a couple other things here. Kevin Ollie and his lack of experience getting into these games. Okay, how much of an advantage is this John Calipari going back to the national title game over Kevin Ollie? I will say this. At this point in time, when you get to the final game, who cares about experience? Because it's all about really your players. Now, I know coaching is going to play a factor into this, but Billy Donovan won two national championships, mm-hmm. and he was outcoached by Kevin Ollie in the semifinal game. Why was he outcoached? So, I, I think in game preparation, after that 16 4 run start by uh, the Gators. Yeah. It was all UConn, and it was the adjustments of UConn because when UConn went small, Billy Donovan didn't adjust, and that's how they got back in the ball game. That one-three-one half-court zone pressure by Florida. If you saw two or three times the way Florida, or excuse me, UConn, just threw it over the top to DeAndre Daniels for the lobs, there was no adjustment by Florida whatsoever. All the adjustments were coming from the UConn side. Best player on the court tonight will be who? Shabazz Napier, no question. He's the most skilled uh, offensive player, the most polished, again, a senior that helps. Um, It's going to be an interesting game because Kentucky is a team of destiny. They started the year preseason number one. They fell off. Whatever you want to say, getting ready for the tournament, they played their best basketball. The way they've won these last three ball games, in dramatic fashion, they're a team of destiny. Freshmen, all starting, that's great. Having said all that, no. having said all that. You're going to shock the world? There's something to be said about the way those two guards 
Shabazz Napier and Ryan Boatwright. I, I just think they are going to be a load. I, I am going with UConn here, I, and I know oh. Big Blue Nation is going to be all upset, but I, I like UConn. I, I really do. Now, Kentucky has – all the advantages because Patrick Young of Florida was dominating inside, and he's not that really gifted or talented inside player. Julius Randle is. Dakari Johnson is. They are going to dominate inside. Kevin Ollie is going to have to do or find some kind of way to, to limit those guys' touches down low because that's how they want to play. They want to play inside. They want to get the ball. They want to score in the paint, and they just want to make a few outside shots, Kentucky does, to alleviate that pressure. If UConn can do a good job on Johnson, Randall, I like UConn. Hey. Um, I do have a stat of the day involving you, Reg. Uh-oh. Seaton, hit the music while I give Reggie Miller a stat of the day since we were talking like about it. Steve Kerr yeah. and Steve Smith. Stat of the day! Stat of the day! <laughs> stat of the day! Stat of the day! Here comes the stat of the day! Career averages from three-point range. Reggie Miller, 39.6%. That's not bad. Steve Smith, 35.8. Who's 35? Steve Smith. Steve Kerr, 45.4. Start of the day! Start of the day! Start of the day! day. Here comes the start of the day! I will say that Reg made 2,500 three-point shots. And I probably took three thousand more than Steve Kerr. You as well. took no. You took eighteen. Oh, okay, yeah. Steve made yeah, seven hundred twenty-six. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Fritzy, check on that. The number of threes Reggie t- attempted and Steve Kerr attempted. Man, you made twenty-five hundred three-pointers. Only to be Trump because there's a man still playing that's going <laughs> to make three thousand. Ray, Ray. Yeah. Ray is getting ready. To, now that record will there will people can talk all they want about Steph Curry, three thousand made threes. You don't. I think, thought I was safe at twenty five hundred. You don't think Steph Curry? Pro, no. Approach it. Mm, no. Man. No. 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 Wow. Because you got to stay healthy the whole way, and you don't I just don't will. think. I don't think he'll stay healthy the whole way. Um, one thing I noticed here: the headline says Roy Hibbert got benched in the Pacers' loss to the Hawks. Um, and then Frank Vogel said he was just giving him a rest. What, what is going on with your Pacers, Reg? Roy Hibbert didn't show up to play, and Coach said, go rest your behind on the end of the bench. <laughs> so, yes, theoretically, that's what he did do. He rested him, but he didn't show up to play. Neither did the Pacers. Look, everyone's talking about the free fall, and I, I get it. What I'm more concerned about is this had been one of the closest teams all season. All they talked about was camaraderie. If you watched the beginning of the year, they did that whatever special on ESPN when the, it was all the starting five, when they really only wanted to talk to Paul George. You're like, no, I'm only going to do it if it's all the starting five and Coach Vogel. Yeah. I, I'm not sensing that camaraderie anymore. And remember, a month and a half, two months ago, you asked me after the trade of Danny Granger, did I like it? And what did I say? I never like when you mess with chemistry. They had the best record in the entire league at that time. Why mess with chemistry? And people are like, well, Danny Granger really wasn't contributing. Well, yes, he was in the locker room, on the plane. I I just don't like messing with chemistry. That's not to fault Evan Turner, and that's not to fault Andrew Bynum. Those are fantastic players. I just don't like messing with chemistry. You attempted 6,486 threes. Steve Kerr attempted uh, 1,599. Man, come on. All right. <laughs> come on. <laughs> He's supposed to have a higher percentage. So you had almost 4,000 more attempts. I was a jacker. You were. You I was were. a jacker from beyond the arc, baby. How? I'm surprised you didn't average like upper 20s. Was it because the Pacers, the, the offense did not cater to you putting up you know, those My kind of My scoring numbers? averages really started to drop when Larry Brown became the head coach. And I say that in a good reason, because my first, I believe it was five or six years before Larry came, it was all about putting the ball in the hole. And once Larry came, it was all about the team. I didn't need to score or shoot as much 
once Larry took over, it was all about the team. What do you think of this uh, Durant stat that he passed Michael Jordan 41 consecutive games with at least 25 points? He is a scoring savant. I'm serious. This, this dude is a stud. And I, I look at it, I don't know when he's ever gonna, not going to score 25 points. I don't think there's a defense out there that can stop Kevin Durant. I, I really do believe that. And think about this, because you would think within those 40, 41 games that Oklahoma City would have got off to a big lead and he could have rested, like, you know, when he scored 13, 14 and everyone contributes. That hasn't been the case. He scored 25-plus points in all those games because they needed him. That's what's remarkable. But is he more of a, a sure thing than Jordan, Kobe, uh, Carl Malone, uh, Kareem? I mean, any of these guys. It, it, is he indefensible more so than those other guys? It's different. Remember, different roles from Kareem to MJ to Kobe to now. It's it's all different. If you put MJ in today's rules, yeah. He would, he would do the same thing. If you put Kareem out there right now, he would do the same thing. Right now, you cannot guard Kevin Durant. But Kareem was indefensible. Well, he trumps every era because there's no one that will ever be able to do what he did and stop that skyhook. Well, nobody can, has attempted the skyhook, Reg. Well, that's why, why you not? could put him in any – he, he was born that way. What I don't do you th- think you can learn that. I think he was born that way. Yeah. Yeah. He was born with that. It's unstoppable. It, it is. In all the sports, that's the one given. You could never, ever stop this guy. No. Home. No. Never. You know, it could be Tiger playing golf, Gretzky playing hockey. It could be, you know, somebody playing baseball. It, it, of all the things, all the moves by an individual, that to me was unstoppable. And you knew it was and, coming. And And here's the thing. You know, when people talk about the Mount Rushmore and all that, yeah. he will always be my center on that Mount, Ru- Mount Rushmore. I-, I love Bill Russell, the greatest winner of all time. But if we're talking about centers, who was the best center of all time? I know there's Wilt out there. You could put Shaq out there. I'm going with Kareem. I would. I'm going to go with Kareem. I'm going to go with Akeem. Hakeem would be my best power forward. <laughs> oh, you're, you're, oh, oh. My, my five. Here's my five. Okay. All right. Here MJ, we go. MJ. All right. Magic. Yeah. We talked about Kareem. Yep. I'm putting Hakeem at my power forward. Nice. And right now, I'm going with Larry Bird, with the exception, if someone gets a three-peat, he's, he, may, he may take over. If someone gets a three-peat this year, right. you can make a case for LeBron if he gets a three-peat this year. What if he, gets, he waits two years to get his third title? Uh, yes. Yes. He's going to be more decorated he, than Bird. He, he he will absolutely be more decorated, yes. Yes, but he won't. Only, only to be trumped by that kid in Oklahoma City. No, he's got to win. He will, but I'm talking about gotta LeBron win. James was the fastest to 23,000 points. Does LeBron end up the all-time leading scorer in NBA history? I think Kevin Durant does. Does LeBron end up with the most assists in NBA history? No. Okay. More than just Stockton? That's another record that will never be touched. Oh, that's right. Never. <laughs> never be touched. But did you did you watch when you're playing against Stockton, did you have those moments where you go, wait, how many assists did he have? Because when you walked onto the court with that little pip squeak, you were like, <laughs> This is not John Stockton. I when I I started to laugh. I was like, that's his little paper boy right here. Are you kidding me? I was like, Where's no way, go get me a cup of coffee. But, because he didn't look like a ball player. But as soon as there was a jump ball and he came over to set a screen, <laughs> one of the dirtiest players ever. But I loved him. <laughs> I loved it. Him and Malone, they fit so well together. I love John. Who Stockton. was dirtier, Malone or Stockton? Ooh, people are going to say Carl Malone. I'm going with John Stockton. Easily. Uh, easily. Because he has, you know, those choir boy looks, too. Those. <laughs> Baby blue eyes, 5'11", 6 feet. No, I wouldn't do anything. Yeah, right. Okay, John. Uh, Safe travels as always. We'll talk to you next week. Theodore, you're the best. Hey, Danette, remember, Theodore, Patrick, Reginald, and then y'all. Okay? Don't be dogging out my boy Fritzy. Fritzy, you have any problems, you know my number. Thanks, bud. I appreciate that. Thank you, Reg. Okay. Reggie Miller, Hall of Famer. 